What is going on, everybody? I hope everyone is doing well on this Sunday evening. And I am Michael Egan, of course, your Jets beat reporter for WFUV Sports, here to recap today's Jets home opener, in which, of course, the Jets fell to their arch rival uh, New England Patriots 25 to 6. It was a tough game, a brutal loss for the team, and especially rough outing for rookie quarterback Zach Wilson. A lot to break down with this game in terms of you know, mostly negative, some positives, but, you know, let's get into some of that right now. I think that the main thing to, to point out, I, I would like to start off is, you know, the the energy at the stadium was, was amazing. This is the first time Jet fans have been back in MetLife Stadium since 2019. It was amazing to have fans back in the building and they brought the energy. I mean, from the national anthem, the player introductions, the Jet fans, they were ready to go. They had their white rally towels. They were in this game doing the JETS Jets, Jets, Jets chants. You know, and, and, and that energy was infectious with the players. You know, the Jets start off, they win the coin toss, they defer. So, of course, the Patriots start with the football and the Jets defense comes out fast. They're making hits, they're making plays. And it almost seemed that all this momentum the Jets had to start this game uh, evaporated a little bit uh, in an instant because uh, on the first drive of the game for the Patriots, right in that first quarter, uh, Damian Harris appeared to have a fumble uh, on a play right there in that first series for New England. And, you know, the refs blew it dead because they said it was for momentum and they, they for progress, excuse me, and they couldn't stop the play. And, of course, that's an unchallengeable call. And looking at the replay, it seems as if he, there, you know, he had fumbled after the game. Some players, uh, including Marcus May, commented they thought it was a fumble. And it seemed from that moment on, it was almost as if a, a foreshadowing of bad things to come for the Jets, things just not breaking their way. So the Jets seem to have a fumble on that opening drive. The, the energy is flowing. And then, you know, the, the refs say forward progress, nothing happens. The Patriots end up marching down the field and they get on the Jets side of the field. Fortunately, Marcus may actually sacks uh, Mac Jones coming off the edge, knocks the Patriots out of field goal range. And you're saying to yourself, okay, you know, the Jets, they had a rough call there with that. That should have been fumble, but they made the defense made up for it. Let's see now what can happen. They forced the Patriots to punt. Zach Wilson comes onto the field. The Jets offense has a nice run on their first play of the game. And then boom, Zach Wilson's first pass of the day, intercepted, man coverage on Corey Davis. He forced it in there. He wasn't open. And that really, I say that that fumble kind of was a foreshadowing, but that first interception that Zach had was really uh, the doomsday predictor because, of course, for those who are watching the game, you know that Zach Wilson ended up on the day with four interceptions, just a, a brutal game for Zach. And that first one was not a good one. And it just it continued to roll downhill from there. So following that Zach Wilson interception early uh, in the first quarter there, the Patriots capitalized. They get a field goal out of it with that advantageous field position. They go up 3 nothing. So here we are. It's still the first quarter, but there's some time remaining on the clock. The Jets had their second possession uh, of the game. And once again, Zach Wilson, interception, his second pass of the game, intercepted, two passes, two interceptions, all in the first quarter. This time, Corey Davis got a hand on it. It seems like he should have caught it, uh, but the ball ended up tipping away and falling into the hands of New England. So here we are in the first quarter, you know, time running down here. And Zach Wilson, the star rookie quarterback, the person that Jet fans have come out to see, has already thrown two interceptions, and the Jets offense has produced Nothing. So this second turnover of the game, the second interception for Zach Wilson resulted in a James White touchdown run. The Patriots ended up going up 10 nothing. So then we head into the second quarter here. The Jets have the ball. They've received the kickoff. Obviously, they had they got a play in before the second quarter started. And, you know, the, the possession, the possession, this third possession of the game for the Jets was highlighted by a beautiful throw from Zach Wilson to Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore's uh, when it was, I think it was his second or third catch in the NFL. He had a, only had a, sec, a couple catches in week one against Carolina, but this was this was the welcome to the show catch for Elijah Moore, if you will. He seemed to have arrived with this play. So it seemed like the Jets had finally, the offense was getting it going. Zach Wilson was not going to be gun shy, it seemed. They get into the red zone. They even get near the goal line. But once again, despite this beautiful play from Zach Wilson to Elijah Moore, despite the fact that the run game, was working for the Jets. The offense stalled in the red zone close to the goal line. They tried running it in several times. Didn't work. Jets ended up settling for a field goal there. So it was 10-3 early in the second quarter. And essentially from that point forward, you know, any little bit of momentum we thought the Jets might have brought back. The Jet fan was back into the game. It basically went away from there. So the, the, the Jets, you know, kick off. They give the ball back to the Patriots. They actually forced the Patriots to punt. Uh, thanks in part to some sacks of Mac Jones, credit to Jonathan Franklin Myers and Jonathan Rankins, who had uh, tremendous games uh, for the Jets. 
just just tremendous uh, day for both of them. And this Jets defensive line as a whole had a, a really wonderful day. So after that, uh, you know, the Jets forced the Patriots to punt. They have the ball back. It's their chance now. They're down 10-3 in the second quarter. Time to tie this game up. What happens? Zach Wilson throws yet another interception, his third interception of the day. Up, Probably his worst up until that point. We'll get to the fourth interception in a second. But he throws what essentially was a jump ball to Braxton Berrios. Braxton Berrios, a great receiver, but a smaller guy, a slot receiver, just a throw that didn't make a lot of sense. So here it is once again, the Jets giving the ball away, three interceptions for Zach Wilson, just a miserable first half for him. The, the Patriots end up capitalizing on this interception. They go up 13-3 at the half. And, of course, the Jets, they were going to get the ball to start the second half. So they're down 13-3, but it's only a 10-point deficit. Mac Jones was fine. He was making smart decisions with the football, but he wasn't blowing the Jets by, out by any mean. And if we look at this first half as a whole, frankly, the Jets were in this game. Their defense was playing well. The offensive line was playing well. Really, what it comes down to was Zach Wilson was just not taking care of the football. But we come out to the second half. The Jets get the ball to start. It's, you know, once again, they're still in this game. There's still a chance for them to come back. The Jets crowd is still relatively into it. And once again, Zach Wilson, the start of the third quarter, throws his fourth and fortunately final interception of the day. He just chucked this one up. Uh, you know, basically threw it down the field he, it, from where my vantage point in the press box, like you didn't really, couldn't really tell who he was trying to throw it to just a, a strange decision for him. Devin McCourty ended up picking that one off. And then that interception ended up leading to a Damian Harris touchdown run uh, sloppy tackling for the Jets on that touchdown. It seemed to me, you know, after Zach Wilson had thrown that fourth interception, the Jets defense all day had been resilient despite the offensive struggles. They themselves stayed strong, but it seemed that that fourth interception for them was the backbreaker. They just were sloppy on the Damian Harris touchdown run. The Patriots ended up going up 19 to three earlier in that third quarter. And basically that was the game essentially, you know, obviously the, the Jets would tack on a, a later field goal to give themselves six points for the day. The Patriots themselves uh, would end up tacking on a couple of field goals. They missed an extra point after that Damian Harris touchdown run. So they ended up with an odd score of 25. Uh, but the Jet, the Patriots end up defeating the Jets 25 to six. And, you know, really, from my point of view, it was that fourth interception. Given there was a lot of game left, I'm not going to deny that. But that was really the straw that broke the camel's back uh, from, my, from my point of view. And I think from the point of view of most Jet fans. So just uh, if we're going to break down some key points from the game, you know, there's just there's a few things to take away as we're, as we're kind of looking back on this Sunday for the Jets. First off, I would say, let's start with the positives. As I mentioned earlier, the offensive line vastly improved from week one. The Jets had struggled immensely in both pass protection and the run game against Carolina. And frankly, that, that was almost you would have no idea they struggled so mightily in week one based on their performance today. Yes. Zach Wilson was sacked a couple of times. Yes. He took some, some pretty sizable hits. Uh, just not stuff you want to see your franchise quarterback take, but overall the pass protection was good. And like I said, the, the run blocking was excellent. Jets ended up rushing for over 150 yards in the day. Guys like Ty Johnson, Tevin Coleman, breaking off runs of 15, 17 yards, stuff that we did not see in week one. So that was a positive. If you were a jet fan looking for a positive from week two, the loss of the Patriots, the improvement of the offensive line is one. Another positive I think is important to mention here is the big day from the defense. I mentioned earlier the defensive line with Sheldon Rankins and Jonathan Franklin Myers, among others, stepping up for the Jets. Uh, also to mention the, the corners for the Jets. There are so much talk going into this season about the Jets' cornerback situation being young, inexperienced. Are they going to be able to hold up? And even despite an injury to Brandon Eccles, one of their rookie corners, uh, Javelin Guidry, second-year man, stepped in, played well alongside Michael Carter the second, who I thought had a fantastic game. The corner out of Duke, making some nice tackles, breaking up some balls, looked good. And, of course, Bryce Hall, who's basically become the – uh, number one corner for the Jets. He had a good game as well. So overall, I mean, between the defensive line, I thought the corners played well. Again, no big pass plays to really speak up for New England. And also even the linebackers played well as well. I, I thought C.J. Mosley had a good game. I thought Quincy, Quincy Williams, Quinton's brother, who the Jets, you know, just recently uh, signed in the last few weeks. I thought he had a good game as well. So defense overall, again, two weeks. I know the score is going to be deceiving. You gave up 25 points this week. You're going to say the defense, not a great game for them. That I have to say personally, I think that, you know, from the eye test, just watching this game, given the fact that, you know, they, the Patriots had such a good field position for most of this game, I was impressed with the defense. And I think another positive to mention as well is the fact that this Jets team did not give up. 
Uh, you only, it could have, they very easily could have just folded it in, you know, gone through the motions for the rest of this game. And they didn't, they pretty much fought through the end uh, towards the end of the game with around six minutes to go in the fourth. They actually were only down two possessions following a field goal. Were they really going to come back? Probably not. The momentum was not on their side, but credit to the jets, even Zach Wilson for continuing to fight. So those are the positives. The negatives, and I think the biggest negative that we have to take out of today as we kind of finish up our recap for this Sunday Jets opener is Zach Wilson's struggles. It was, it was, I mean, it's as concerning as you as it can be for a quarterback second start in the NFL. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, you see him, he's also struggling. We see that Justin Fields is struggling. The rookie quarterbacks are having a tough time, so we can't make too much out of this. I mean, Zach said all the right things post game. He's composed, he's professional, he knows what to do. But you can't deny that, you know, four interceptions, 19 to 33, 201 yards. That's, that's not an impressive stat line. No touchdowns on the day for Zach. Uh, he did make some plays with his, his legs, which was a, a little encouraging, but just a rough day for him. I, I would say with, with Zach, there were a couple of throws. Uh, one to Braxton Berrios down the sideline late in the game. Another one to Jeff Smith. You know, these, these plays were a little, a little too late, a little too little. But again, he showed me some promise. So, Zach, despite the fact that it was a very poor day for him, I think it's going to be a learning experience. And they, there were a couple throws in there that gave you at least a glimpse of what he can accomplish. And frankly, if I can kind of finishing up with the, with the Zach point and the team evaluation as a whole, if Zach took better care of the football and as Coach Sala explained in his postgame press, presser, learned to play quote unquote boring football, meaning you don't always have to go for the big play, the Jets could have very easily well won this game. Uh, unfortunately, I think the last the, the loss, excuse me, falls on Zach Wilson. I think he I think he knows that. I think he essentially owned up to that in the post game. Did you feel the game get away from you at all? Were you were you pressing the issue? I mean, I wouldn't say pressing. I, I felt like there was a lack of rhythm. I think it's obviously because you know, the first two passes or interceptions, it's tough to find that rhythm. You know, you're not on the field much. All of a sudden, the first quarter's over, and you know, we've only had a couple plays out on the field. So uh, we got to start better. You know, I got to start better. Really, we just got to execute both across the board. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take that this week, and you know, it's on my shoulders. I got to do better. And you know, one, one, one a couple final points here uh, in terms of just the last couple comments to make. Number one, Denzel Mims, the Jets' second round pick from last year. High expectations coming into the year for him, and frankly, he's been he hasn't been heard from. He had a pretty much non-existent preseason, uh, partially due to injury and a stomach infection and all that. But the coaching staff. Seems to be down on him somewhat. Very limited action week one. He was inactive today. And in the postgame press conference, uh, Coach Sala was asked why was he inactive. And essentially, Coach Sala gave a similar reason for why he was he didn't play much week one. It's the simple fact that uh, Coach Sala emphasized if you're going to be a receiver lower down on the depth chart, you have to know all the positions, you know, it, all the different, whether you're going to play slot, outside, et cetera, inside and out. And it seems to be insinuated that Denzel is just not right there, not, not there right now, excuse me. And Saul once again pointed out that, you know, Mims is fighting with Jeff Smith, Keelan Cole. And it seems also from what Coach Saul is saying that despite the fact that he's he's praising Denzel Mims' work ethic, from what we're hearing, it doesn't seem that, you know, his performance has been up to par with Keelan Cole and Jeff Smith, with, which for a guy that was a second-round pick, that's a little concerning. But one last thing I'd like to end with here is this. In the post-game press conference, Zach Wilson was asked about booing. And it, later in the game, I think Jet fans, you know, they they were pretty reserved for most of the game. But, of course, they they let their feelings be known towards the end of the fourth quarter, especially when Zach missed some wide-open uh, receivers. Michael Carter, for uh, the running back, Michael Carter, for instance, uh, was missed on a throw there at one point towards the end of the game when he was wide open. And, you know, Zach was asked about these booing, whether it got to him. And obviously, as we know, in New York right now, the topic of booing is incredibly relevant and Zach said, you know, Finch, essentially he said fans should be booing. He essentially said that, you know, with, based on the products on the field, he's not surprised that they're booing. And, you know, that's the kind of professional attitude that you want to hear from your star quarterback, your franchise quarterback. So that's going to do it for the Jets recap for this week. The Jets fall in the home opener to the New England Patriots 25 to 6. They are 0-2 to start the season. They will be traveling to Denver, Colorado next week to take on a tough Broncos team. But that is going to do it for me this evening. Thank you for tuning in. I am Michael Legan. I have you covered for all the latest Jets news this year for WFUV Sports. Thank you for watching.